。Hello， 大家好，昨天 Facebook 正式改名，新名字是 Meta。呃，这是元宇宙 Metaverse 的前缀，意思是包含万物无所不连。呃，此举可以显示出，呃，扎克伯格是如何围绕元宇宙的概念，准备重新定位这家科技公司，专注于构建元宇宙。那结合之前公布即将在欧洲招聘一万名工程师，而、啊、专注于元宇宙项目的开发，可见他决心之大，力度之强。那 Facebook 呢，其实是有资本进行转变的，在我之前的影片有介绍他们这个最新的虚拟技术 AR 这个影片，也导致呢 B 圈里呢这个。和这个 Metaverse 相关的项目呢，哎，都暴涨啊！包括呢 ，Decentraland， 也就是 m i n a b 币，那最高暴涨到了百分之九十。那技术是一方面，未来的元宇宙、区块链技术呢，一定是不可或缺的部分。而且很多人都想体验一下现有元宇宙的概念是什么样子的。那具体关于这个 Mana B 的介绍呢？呃，后面有机会呢，我会做影片和大家分享的。那今天的内容呢，就是扎克伯格昨天发布的一个将近一小时二十分钟的一个关于 Metaverse， 也就是元宇宙的讲解影片。呃，我把这个精华内容压缩到了十分钟左右。呃，因为时间仓促啊，避免这个翻译的不是人话啊，我这次就不用机器翻译了，那直接上英文字幕供小伙伴们参考。嗯、呃。就当练英语听力了。好了，话不多说啊，现在开始。To adopt a new company brand to encompass everything that we do, to reflect who we are and what we hope to build, I am proud to announce that starting today, our company is now Meta. Our mission remains the same; it's still about bringing people together. Our apps and their brands—they're not changing either, and we are still the company. The designs technology around people. Hey, and welcome to Connect. Today, we're going to talk about the metaverse, starting with the most important experience of all: connecting with people. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset, and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually, and it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just got to find something to wear. All right, perfect. <laughs> oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mark. Hi, Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in space.、Uh-huh. Who made this place? It's <laughs> awesome, right? It's from a crater I met in L.A.、Uh, this place is amazing. <laughs> Boz, is that you? Of course, it's me. You know I had to be the robot man. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I knew you were bluffing. Wait, where is Naomi? Let's、yes, call her. Naomi. <laughs> hey, should we deal you in?、Hey. Sorry, I'm running late, but you gotta see what we're checking out. There's an artist going around SoHo, hiding AR pieces for people to find. 3D street art. That's cool. Send that link over so we can all look at it. This is stunning. Okay, that is something. That's awesome. Wow. wow. I love the movement. Wait, it's it's disappearing. This is amazing. Hold on, I'll tip the artist and they'll extend it. Wow, brilliant. Privacy and safety. Need to be built into the metaverse from day one. You'll get to decide when you want to be with other people, when you want to block someone from appearing in your space, or when you want to take a break and teleport to a private bubble to be alone. You're going to be able to bring things from the physical world into the metaverse. Almost any type of media that can be represented digitally—photos, videos, art, music, movies, books, games—you name it. Now, lots of things that are physical today, like screens. We'll just be able to be holograms in the future. You won't need a physical TV. It'll just be a one-dollar hologram from some high school kid halfway across the world, and you'll be able to take your items and project them into the physical world as holograms in augmented reality too. One part of this is Horizon Home, which is our early vision for a home space in the metaverse. Horizon Home is the first thing that you'll see when you put on your Quest headset. Today, there are already a bunch of options to choose from, and in the future, anyone will be able to create one. We've just called it home until now because it's been missing something very important: people. Soon, we're going to be introducing a social version of home, where you can invite your friends to join you as avatars. 
You'll be able to hang out, watch videos together, and jump into apps together. Then there is Horizon Worlds, which is where you can build worlds and jump into them with people. Horizon is designed to make it possible for everyone to create, and we're already seeing people build some really interesting experiences, from creating new games together, to throwing surprise parties in VR that family and friends around the world can join. Over the last year and a half, a lot of us who work in offices have gone remote, and while I miss seeing the people I work with, I think remote work is here to stay for a lot of people, so we're going to need better tools to work together. Let's take a look at what working in the metaverse will be like. Imagine if you could be at the office without the commute. You would still have that sense of presence, shared physical space, those chance interactions that make your day all accessible from anywhere. Now imagine that you have your perfect work setup and you can actually do more than you could in your regular work setup. And on top of all that, you can keep wearing your favorite sweatpants. And as we focused more on work, and frankly, as we've heard your feedback more broadly, we're working on making it so you can log into Quest with an account other than your personal Facebook account. We're starting to test support for work accounts soon, and we're working on making a broader shift here within the next year. I know this is a big deal for a lot of people. Not everyone wants their social media profile linked to all these other experiences, and I get that, especially as the metaverse expands. And I'll share more about that later. But I'm genuinely optimistic about work in the metaverse. We know from the last couple of years that a lot of people can effectively work from anywhere. But hybrid is going to be a lot more complex when some people are together and others are still remote. So giving everyone the tools to be present, no matter where they are, whether as a hologram sitting next to you in a physical meeting or in a discussion taking place in the metaverse, that's going to be a game changer. I think this could be very positive for our society and economy. Giving people access to jobs in more places, no matter where they live, will be a big deal for spreading opportunity to more people. Dropping our daily commutes will mean less time stuck in traffic and more time doing things that matter. And it'll be good for the environment. We plan to continue to either subsidize our devices or sell them at cost to make them available to more people. We'll continue supporting sideloading and linking to PCs so consumers and developers have choice rather than forcing them to use the Quest Store to find apps or reach customers. And we'll aim to offer developer and creator services with low fees in as many cases as possible so we can maximize the overall creator economy, while recognizing that to keep investing in this future, we'll need to keep some fees higher for some period to make sure that we don't lose too much money on this program overall. After all, while a growing number of developers are already profitable, we expect to invest many billions of dollars for years to come before the metaverse reaches scale. Today, we're introducing the Presence platform, which is a broad range of machine perception and AI capabilities that empower developers to build uh, mixed reality experiences on Quest 2. Now, you want to tell us more about the Presence platform? Yeah, we've said before that realistic presence is the key to feeling connected in the metaverse. Uh, and the Presence platform's capabilities are what's going to deliver on that promise. Things like environmental understanding, content placement and persistence, voice interaction, standardized hand interactions. In fact, let's start with hands. I mean, the human hand is an engineering marvel. And bringing hands into VR was no easy feat. Uh, it required a lot of collaboration against product, design, research, but we continue to improve that product, finding new ways to navigate with gestures and interact with VR. So today, we're introducing the Interaction SDK a library of modular components that will make it easy to add hand interactions to your apps. That's pretty exciting. But next year, we are releasing a new product that will push the boundaries of VR even further. We've codenamed it Project Cambria. So this isn't the next Quest. It's going to be compatible with Quest, but Cambria will be a completely new, advanced, and high-end product, and it'll be at the higher end of the price spectrum, too. Our plan here is to keep building out this product line to release our most advanced technology before we can hit the price points that we target with Quest. All right, so let's talk about some of the new advances here. Yeah, sure. There's a ton of new tech going into Cambria. For example, your avatar will be able to make natural eye contact and reflect your facial expressions in real time. This way, people you're interacting with will have a, a real sense of how you're actually feeling. It does mean building more sensors into a form factor that's comfortable to wear for a while. 
And because we want VR to be for everyone, we also have to make sure avatars represent a diverse set of human facial features and skin tones, as well as paying attention to things like um, glasses and beers that may get in the way of some of the sensors. So that's going to be a big step forward for social presence. And I'm really glad that we're focused on making it inclusive from the start. Now, what about unlocking more mixed reality experiences? I mean, imagine working at your virtual desk with multiple screens while seeing your real desk so clearly that you can pick up a pen and write notes without taking your headset off. Or you know, you're doing a workout with a virtual instructor in your living room. It's gonna be so cool. We're already seeing the potentials of these kinds of experiences today as people are building for our pass-through API. But with Cambria, we'll be taking this to the next level with high resolution, colored, mixed reality pass-through. We essentially combine an array of sensors with reconstruction algorithms to represent your physical world in a headset with a sense of depth and perspective. But the ultimate goal here is true augmented reality glasses. And we've been working on that too. And today, I wanna to show you an experience that we've been working on for Project Nazare which is the codename for our first full augmented reality glasses. Here, you'll see you're chatting with friends on WhatsApp and planning a game night. You can select a game, and then as you walk over to your kitchen, you can easily just put your game onto the table and you're off. And that's the kind of experience that augmented reality will unlock. There's a lot of technical work to get this form factor and experience right. We have to fit hologram displays, projectors, batteries, radios, custom silicon chips, cameras, speakers, sensors to map the world around you, and more into glasses that are about five millimeters thick. So we still have a ways to go with Nazare, but we are making good progress.